Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I'll be discussing derivatives of products of functions. This material is from pages 196 to 198 of section 3.3. Uh, examples 1, 2, 3 have to do with derivatives of products. The homework is these four questions from section 3.3. Now, remember the large collection of derivative rules that we've learned about so far. Our early rules, the constant function rule, power rule, the sum and constant multiple rule. More recently, the three rules for derivatives of exponential functions, and the two rules for derivatives of log functions. So today we'll be learning about the product rule. So consider a product of functions, a function of the form f of x equals g of x times h of x. The question is, how are the derivatives related? Well, the good news is that there's an obvious relationship. The bad news is the obvious relationship is wrong. Uh, I'll go ahead and write the obvious relationship. I'll write it in red. So there's the obvious relationship. You just put primes on everything. And again, that relationship is wrong. Now, how do we know it's wrong? Well, consider this easy example. Let's let f of x be 5x squared. So let's find f prime using our established derivative rules. So the result that we get is f prime of x is 10x. We use the constant multiple rule. We use the power rule with n equals 1. Now what if we use this obvious relationship? What if we try this? I'm going to do this in red as well. So you see that we get a result of 0. It's because this derivative of 5 is 0, and that kills everything. And you can see that using the, the obvious relationship that's the wrong relationship, anytime we have a function that has a constant in front, we would end up getting a derivative that's 0. So this is clearly incorrect. So what should we do? Well, the correct relationship between f prime, g prime, and h prime is given by the product rule. If f of x is this product, g of x times h of x, then f prime is given by this formula. You do g prime times h plus g times h prime. So the derivative of the left function times the right function plus the left function times the derivative of the right function. In single equation form, it says this, d over dx of this product, g of x times h of x. Now, maybe I should have put in parentheses here. d dx of this product is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So we'll just do some examples in the rest of the video. First example is f of x is this product of polynomials. So our job is to find f prime using the product rule. So there you see that when you use the product rule, you, you set up these future derivatives, but you don't actually do them in this step. The product rule doesn't say what these derivatives are going to be. It just says that those are the derivatives that you're going to do, and that shows you where you're going to, to put the results. I think it's important to show this step of the product rule uh, just by itself, not showing those the results of those next derivatives. Now, in the next step, we'll do those derivatives, that one, in that one, and we'll put those results uh, right right there. 
Well, so it helps to start by putting the frame first, the things that won't change. So the results of those derivatives are going to go in those parentheses, but all this stuff that's here is not going to change. Okay, uh, I'll do those derivatives now. So in this step, those red arrows are um, derivatives that I computed using the, the power rule, and the green arrows are derivatives that I computed using the constant function rule. Now we have to simplify. And there's our result. f prime of x is this. Let's go on to the next example. In the next example, we have f of x being this product of a polynomial times an exponential function. And we're supposed to find f prime of x and simplify. So there you see the result of using the product rule. I did not just take the derivative of this function and the derivative of this function and multiply them together. That would have been the obvious thing. That's the incorrect thing. The product rule is that you have to do this crazy setup. And again, let me stress the importance of showing the, the result of doing the product rule. Don't do these next derivatives in the same step that you do the product rule. Leave them for the next step. So for the next step, I'll copy the frame, all those things that won't be changing. And then I'll populate those parentheses with the results of the derivatives. Now this derivative on the left, we did in the previous problem. I'll just put the result in, in the parentheses. And over here, we have the derivative of an exponential function. So we use exponential function rule number one. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Okay, now we're supposed to simplify. How can we simplify this? Well, notice that in this expression that we've ended up with, there is a common factor. Each of these expressions has a factor of e to the x. So I find it helpful to underline the common factor and then we'll factor that out. We'll move it off to the side. So I do that first. I, I show the factor moved off to the side, and then I'm going to have this big pair of parentheses. And in the parentheses, I'm going to have all the stuff that was left behind. And then we can simplify some more. Inside these big brackets, we can combine some terms. The minus 6x and the plus 13x can be combined, and the plus 13 and minus 5 can be combined. So we end up with minus 3x squared plus 7x plus 8 times e to the x. Let's go on. In the next question, we're supposed to find f prime parentheses 0 and simplify. Now notice, that does not mean to find the derivative of 0. That means to substitute x equals 0 into the formula for f prime of x. Let's bring that formula down. So there's our formula for f prime of x. Let's get the empty version. And then finally, let's substitute in x equals 0. So we end up getting a result of just the number 8. f prime parentheses 0 is 8. And again, we did not do this by finding the derivative of 0. The derivative of 0 would have just been the number 0. All 
All right, we have a similar question for question C. We're supposed to find f prime parentheses 1. Well, we'll do the same thing. That does not mean to take the derivative of 1. That would give us an answer of 0. This symbol means substitute x equals 1 into f prime of x. So we get a result of 12e. Looking back at question b, I see I made a mistake. In the third line, I changed this 7 to a 3. Uh, it didn't affect the answer because that term was became 0 anyway, or was multiplied by 0 anyway. But I should correct that. So look, our result from question b is just the simple number 8. Our result from question c actually has the number e in it. And remember that e to the 1 is just e. So that term simplifies. We have one more example. Example 4, uh, we have a product of a polynomial and a logarithm. And we're supposed to find f prime of x. Well, the, the trick here is to notice that this is a product. So you don't simply take the derivative of 5x to the 7 and the derivative of ln of x and multiply them together. That would be the obvious thing, and that would be wrong. Maybe I'll write that. So that's the wrong approach. So we have to use the product rule. So there's the product rule set up, the derivative of the left function times the right function plus the left function times the derivative of the right function. And notice again my, my layout. I don't do these derivatives in this step. The product rule doesn't say what those derivatives are going to be. It just sets up the derivatives that you're going to do in the next step. So as I did in previous problems, I'll start by copying down the frame the stuff that's not going to change. And then we'll put those derivatives in those parentheses. So the derivative of 5x to the 7th, we'll use the, the constant multiple rule and the power rule for that. The derivative of ln of x, remember the log function rule, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Now we have to clean this up. We have to simplify. We'll notice that this left term can be cleaned up quite a bit. The right term can also be simplified quite a bit. Uh, x to the 7th over x is x to the 6th. So there's the answer uh, written in two terms. Now this expression can be simplified quite a bit. Notice there's an x to the 6th on both sides, and there's a, there's a, a 5 on both sides as well. So we can factor out a 5 and an x to the 6th. A lot of students get confused by factoring, though, so I want to point out maybe a helpful way to think about factoring that will make it a little bit more reliable. Once you identify a common factor in both terms, make sure that the terms are written as that common factor times something. That might sound vague, so let me just do it. This left term I'm going to write very clearly. I write it as 5x to the 6th times 7 ln of x. The next term I'm going to write is 5x to the 6th times something also. Now, why would I do that? Well, think about this. I want to factor out a common factor. And it's going to be helpful to think about what's going to be left behind. So now it'll be very clear. I write the common factor out front. And then what gets left behind is very clear because I had those terms written on the previous line as 5x to the 6th times something. So my final answer is f prime of x is 5x to the 6th times the quantity 7 ln of x plus 1. Let's go on. Question b, we're supposed to find f prime parentheses 1. Well, for that, it'll, it'll help to have f prime parentheses x down here. So let's go get it.
All right, so to compute f prime parentheses 1, we substitute x equals 1 into f prime of x. So we end up with the answer that f prime parentheses 1 is the number 5. Now notice that we used this um, sort of well-known value for ln of x. ln of 1 is 0. Re remember where that came from. That came from the fact that e to the 0 is 1. All right, let's go on. The last question is to find f prime parentheses e and simplify. So we get an answer 40e to the 6th. And along the way, we use this well-known result of uh, ln of x, that is, ln of e is the number 1. And that's because, all right, that's the end of that example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.